The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Star Trader. We will be just waiting for two minutes before we start to gather in the meeting. Good evening, everyone, and welcome with our free webinars with Star Trader. Today, we'll be talking about major topic. So please, if you have any issue with the voice or the uh, pictures you see in front, uh, in front of you on the screen, kindly note that in the questions or in the chat. I will just give you one minute if you want to give me any notes about the voice or the screen on the chat. All right, everyone. My name is Mohamed Burqan, and I'm market analyst and star trader. Today, we'll be talking about market analysis. Big topic everyone is talking about on social media or even among the traders, because it's very important topic in financial markets, especially in Forex. So today, we'll be discussing about the major points on it. Just what is market analysis? What are the types of market analysis and what is the importance of market analysis? We will not go into deep techniques in market analysis because that will be covered in future webinars. So let's start about let's start talking about market analysis. What is market analysis? When when first thing you know when when you hear the first time about analysis, you will know that it's deep thinking about something or reading about something. Market analysis is a process of reading and interpreting the market regarding news, data, movement, prices of certain assets in the market. So that will be combined and interpreted. So we know exactly what is happening in the market right now and what is the domino effect of this in the future in the financial markets. So, types of market analysis. We have two major types, which is one, 
fundamental analysis, or some people call it a news analysis, which talks about the major news in the market, whether it's geopolitics, economics, and statistics. The other part is technical analysis, which I'm pretty sure most of you are familiar with this term, because whenever you see a chart, you will read technical analysis. Whenever you see any uh, website talks about Forex, you will read technical analysis. Now we will start with fundamental analysis. It's a huge topic because it talks about macroeconomics, which is the reading of the economy of any country or uh, several countries combined and measuring the relationship between these economics. So fundamental analysis is a way to evaluate an asset based on the economic uh, readings behind it. So let's say, for example, we are analyzing gold. So the major things will be affecting gold are geopolitics, which is, for example, the wars happening around the world. The U.S. economy, which is the major economy that affects the, uh, the gold prices. So reading of these events and analyzing it, it will be fundamental analysis. So the data we get for fundamental analysis it's mainly from official governmental or credible sources like central bank, economic releases from governments, geopolitical events, readings, which are news about geopolitical events like war. We have Russian war for the time being between Russia and Ukraine. We have the economic war between uh, China and U.S., and we have also some kind of tension between Russia and Europe. So all of these called geopolitical events. The fourth thing is weather, which is a summary of natural disasters. If we have hurricane, like for example, we have in Japan, for the time being, uh, the floods that happening around the world, these are also affecting the market by a way or another, indirect or in an indirect way. To summarize that, we can say we have two types of fundamental analysis. The first one is the quantitative analysis, which is, as the name is, based on numbers. So reading the numbers, analyzing it uh, based on statistics, comparison between time, time frame to time frame or month to month, year to year. This is all called quantitative because it's based on a quantity, a number that we are reading. Like we have unemployment, we have interest rate, we have uh, inflation, and these things. The other part is qualitative, which are things that we can't measure in numbers, but we can expect the domino effect of it. Let's say, for example, we have a press release happening from the chairman, of the Fed chairman, Jerome Powell. He's going up and speaks up he goes up and speaks about the market the economic uh, view of uh, federal reserves this is all qualitative because there are no numbers in this speech but we should know the effect of this speech in the market so this is the qualitative analysis for the time being for this introduction do you have any questions if you have any questions do not hesitate to ask me directly in the questions tab All right, then let's start talking about the major news, the major concepts or names we should know in the market when we are reading about fundamental analysis. For the time being, in this year, in 2022, we had many, many, many events that men were mentioned inflation, recession, monetary policy, interest rate, unemployment. All of these concepts are parts of fundamental analysis. Starting of one by one of these major things, we have on, on the screen in front of us six of the main data that we have to look for when we are analyzing the market fundamentally. The inflation, which is the increase in the prices in certain in country or the decrease in a buying power in that country. The recession, which is the, the, the slow in that uh, country. GDP, 
gross domestic production, which is the total income of that country as one unit, if we can measure it, and it can be measured by dollars or the, uh, the currency of that country. So GDP basically is like a return of a company where a company gets sales, revenues, and net income. Here, countries can have GDP. Moving next, we have monetary policy, which is directly related to central banks. Any decision that central banks take are really reflected on monetary policy. That's why we say monetary policy is related to money and the flow of money in that country. So the central bank increased interest rate, which means that central bank is going to tightening monetary policy. Reducing interest rate, which means losing, loosening uh, monetary policy. So moving next, the, top, the most important news in the world, which is non-farm payroll, which was released on the first Friday of each month from the US, which measures the, the amount of or the number of new vacancies in the US market in the, uh, in the sectors that are not farming sectors, in technology, industry, anything that is not in the farming sector. Following that, unemployment, which we all are uh, familiar with, unemployment is the amount of people or number of people that can't find jobs in certain country. So far, any questions do you have? Yes. Non-farm payroll is different than unemployment. Usually in the U.S., they release them both in the same day, usually, but they are different reports. Unemployment is the total unemployment rate in the, in the country. Non-farm payroll is solely for the U.S., which is counting the number of the new vacancies in the sectors that are not in farming. Yes. So if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask. Moving next, we will be talking in deep about inflation, recession, and monetary policy. Because in 2022, these three terms are the most used and the most we hear about. The inflation, which is the decline in purchasing power of given currency over time for any country. If you have $10 in the U.S., Two years ago, you will be buying certain, for example, certain product. This year, after around 9% inflation, that $100 will buy you 9 or 10% less amount of that product. That means there is an inflation of 9 or 10%. Increasing in prices. The decreasing in buying power of your cash, so the amount of cash you have is not as strong as it used to be and it can't buy you the same amount of products or even the same products that you used to buy. If you can measure this for the whole country, that won't be a good thing. Companies will be benefiting at start, but later on, customers will not be able to buy the products, so the economy will start declining. That will take us to the opposite, which is the deflation, or the, the, the next step of it will be the recession. So deflation is generally the decline of prices in, in country, the prices of goods and services in that country, associated with a contraction in the supply of money. People will have no money. There will be high unemployment rate, low income for the for the citizens, low income for the companies, and that will take us to deep recession. How we control these? These are considered the nightmares of central banks, how they control them. They control them by the monetary policy, which is basically tightening or losing the amounts of cash or free, free float in the country. By increasing interest rate, they will encourage people to go deposit their money in the banks, 
me that means they will have less money to spend at that moment the opposite will be when they decrease the interest rate where people will prefer to take their money and spend it out with their own investments or for personal spending because they will make better use of it that's how central banks control the amount of cash people have that's how they can control the inflation and deflation in that country and prevent going to extreme inflation or stagflation or even recession. That means if you keep up with me, if you can keep up with me, we are talking about a cycle which is inflation, then central banks will interfere, will take this, will slow down the inflation, will take us into a slow deflation that might go out of control and then we will have recession. This is called the economic cycle. That's why people in the market, they keep saying history repeats itself because actually it is a cycle and this cycle repeats itself over time. If you can look on the history, if you can read in the history, you will notice the same pattern. We have a growth, then we will reach the peak or the inflation where central banks start increasing interest rates. Meanwhile, the economies will start adapting Companies will start adapting and then we will have a slow deflation that will accelerate at some point until we exceed the equilibrium point and go into recession. That recession will go deep, will go the bottom or the trough of it. Then central banks will interfere again. They will lose in the, the, the monetary policy. They will reduce the interest rates so companies can take money from the banks and invest more, hire more people, recover the economy, and we'll go into that cycle again. So far in, uh, in this cycle, is there any problem, any questions you have? Yes, Mr. Amir, this cycle repeats itself, but not this way exactly uh, this cycle repeats itself but there is no specific time frame for it so uh, if there are studies say like it used to be like 20 years between each cycle and the next uh, and other studies saying like uh, it was like 2025 20, then 15 to 10 years and now we are talking about 10 to 7 to 5 years per cycle but that's not precise actually because there's no a specific proof that depends on the study the terms the events like we had the covid thing that will that accelerated the cycle so there is no specific timing for each cycle but the signs are there and what we know about this cycle is there so we can expect it we can forecast it and we can go through it again Thank you for asking. Yes, thank you for asking. And if you have any further questions, also do not hesitate to ask me again. So we talked about this cycle, how this cycle can help us, how this economic token can help us, these news and topics. Here we, will, we should know the importance of fundamental analysis so we can discuss further about why we use this news and what is important about knowing about fundamental analysis. Fundamental analysis help us to predict the long-term trends because any decision that government take or any war or any monetary policy decision, that have two effects. One, on-spot effect, which is, let's say, for example, the Fed released a press release now saying they will increase interest rate. That will affect the market on spot, yes, but the next meeting will be after two months. So this decision will affect the market over the next two months, which is eight weeks of trading. For traders, eight weeks is too long time. So that's how, that's how we can benefit of fundamental analysis. When we read the economics, when we read the decisions, the news, the PRs, we know what is going to happen in the market when these news are released and what is the effect of it over the next one, two, three months. That depends on the, when is the next uh, press release will be 
in the market available for people to use for their fundamental analysis again. It's generally used for long-term and medium-term investment, more than day trading or scalping. But that doesn't mean that uh, traders or day traders can benefit out of it because these news usually cause high volatility in the market. They usually cause some kind of mess in the trade. So the up and down in the market will be uh, high. The volatility will be high. So that will benefit the day traders also. That's why we need to know these things to survive in the market and make good profit, which we understand why and how to make. Instead of just missing this news, for example, you missed a news, then market moved the way that technically you said yes, market will move up, and then we have news that you missed, move the market down. You lost money, not because your strategy was, was not efficient, it was because you missed some kind of important news. Now, we knew the importance of fundamental analysis. All right, how we can implement the fundamental analysis? Unfortunately, on my point of view, you can't implement one part of market analysis uh, as, it's, as it is, because market is a huge. So the market is a huge, and we can't analyze all the market by just one part of it. That's why we have two parts, fundamental and technical. Now, we have good view about fundamental analysis. We didn't go into details, because we will have advanced webinar about the fundamental analysis where we discuss in details the meaning of each number of these numbers we show the gdp interest rate monetary policy and these things but for the time being i just want you to have good idea about it so when you read any news when you go to a newspaper website instagram facebook wherever you are reading your news whenever you see a report you should know that yes this is the fundamental part and this is the technical part which will be talking about it next but before we talk about the technical analysis we should know something that is very important that is all the technical analysis in the market everyone knows all we know about technical analysis is built on the dow theory so the Dow theory is for Charles Dow, who was a writer, a publisher by 1900 to 1902. He was publishing in Wall Street Journal. So that guy basically said the market discounts everything, even emotions of the traders, but not natural disasters, because that's something no one can expect. What does that mean? That means that in the chart, when you are reading the prices of any asset, you can know what is happening with the traders themselves and what is going to happen next when they are buying, when they are selling based on the pattern of the chart itself. So, Charles Dow also created the industrial average, which we all know is Dow Jones industrial average, which is still for now, which is the U.S. market leader. Analyzing and knowing about this indicator can give you huge information about the U.S. stock market. Without further ado, let's go to technical analysis. So technical analysis is the art of forecasting the direction of prices uh, of the prices in the market it's an art it's not a, it's not science it's an art based on statistics and mathematics yes there is science in this art but it's not solely science because the result is probability when we are reading a chart we can say it might go up we we have higher probability that this price will go up or will or will go down so it's an art, but how good the artist is based on how much experience they have, how, how they can read the market, the patterns, the prices, the news, how they can combine the fundamental analysis with what we will be talking about now. 
So we knew that it's an art. We knew that there is a probability in it. We have a possibility that we will be right and a possibility that we won't. That's why we have gainers and losers in the market. And we will now know some patterns. We'll talk about some behaviors in the market where we can tend to be winners in the market without getting out of the trend itself. Before we are talking about the trends and patterns, we will be talking about the types of data that charts provide. So when we are looking at any chart, we should know what is the date of the chart, when this chart was taken, what is the last point of this chart. We should know the open price of that product and closing price, high price, low price, and the volume traded. Let's start one by one. Let's say we are in today. So the date, we know. The open price, which is the first price happened to be traded at today, after the market opened today. This is the open price. Later on, we'll be talking about the time frame. So the open price will be the, the first price that as it was traded at, at the open of that time window or time frame. High is the highest price that was traded during that day or that time frame. Let's say we're talking about today, the highest, the high is the highest price today happened, not tomorrow, not yesterday, for today. The low is the opposite. It's the lowest price that takes us to the close price, which is the closing price, the last tick, the last trade, the last deal happened before market closing. And the volume is the sum of the trading of that day, either the buy side or the sell side. So when we say that we have $247,000 traded today, which means that $247 on buy side and $274,000 sorry on the sell side. So this amount calculates either the buy or the sell side, not both of them. Then moving next to the time frames we mentioned before, we have in in our platform, the start the platforms, we have many, many, many time frames. So we have from two, four hours, two hours, one day, weekly, monthly, and all these. But practically, the most used are these four time frames. Hourly, minutes, weekly, and daily. What does that mean? So each point of that chart will cover one time frame, which is one hour, or one minute, or one week, or one day. So when we measure that, the price is open, high, low, and close. We'll, to, we'll be talking about one time frame or one window, which is one hour or one minute or one week or one, one day. So the open price of that hour is X. The close price is Y. The high is Z. And let's say the low is W. Clear so far? This is important to, to know and to remember. You can take a screenshot here because that will be useful when we are talking about the candlesticks. If everything is clear, write me one in the chat or in the questions. Thank you, Mr. Anil. Yeah, so moving next. We'll be talking about something that is very important. Now we are going into the real serious things. The chart types. In the charts, we have bar chart, which is the least used type. We will not discuss that much today. We might have a webinar about it in the future, but for the time being, let's talk about the important, most used and practical things. We have the line chart, which I'm pretty sure you have seen in, in every place, even when we were studying math in the school, that was the line chart. But in the market, we are using something different. We're using something called candlesticks. 
which were which a thing that you see on Instagram, on Facebook, even when you are driving in the street, any company that speaks about finance, any news paper that economic newspaper will mention candlesticks or will show you candlesticks and let's see it together. That is the chart of the candlesticks. The most used chart, the most studied the chart and statistically the most analyzed chart. Why? Because candlesticks are unique by the way they present the, the data of the market. Each candle of these candles you see in front of you on the screen have many components. Each component has a meaning and when you combine them, they will give you one candlestick which you can, you can read. And when you combine candlesticks, that will give you something we call pattern. Patterns or formations in the market are very important because you need to know it. Where whatever happens in the market happens in patterns. So we'll be moving now for the details. We will have more explanations about these things. Each candle can be one of two types, bullish candle or bearish candle. Usually they are presented in, presented in the market in red and green. In Star Trader, if you can see, our chart is red and green. Some people can say white and black or yellow and black. There are many colors you can see, but you should know that they are a bullish candle and bearish candle. What bullish and bearish means first? If you haven't uh, attended our previous webinars, so bullish means up candle green candle happy candle the candle that makes us profit where we are waiting when we are buying bearish candle is the candle that goes down it makes us profit only if we are selling so we buy prices went up we made profit yes that was bullish candle we sell we did short selling prices went down we have made profit, that's bearish candle. Each one of these candles has four or five major parts. One of them is the high price. If you can see on the, on the bullish candle on the screen, on the left side, we have the high price, which is the highest price during that time frame or that day or that hour. So then will be the close price. For bullish candle, the difference between the close and high usually is called upper shadow or upper wick. So upper wick or upper shadow shows us the difference between the close price and the highest price happened in the market. Does that mean that we always should, should see upper wick? No, because sometimes the market might close on the high price. So that the close price will be the high price. That means that we won't have the upper shadow. When we go to the other side of the same bullish candle, we have the open price and the low price. The difference between the open price and the low price is called the lower shadow or lower wick. The, if you can see between the open and the close price, this space called the body of the candle. Whenever the body of the candle is green, it's bullish candle. Whenever the open price is lower than the close price, it's called bullish candle. That means the candles went up. It opened low, closed high. We made profit. We can move to the next candle, which is the bearish candle. The bearish candle is the declining candle. We can see that it's totally opposite. We have the high and the open price on the upper, on the upper wick. Where we, where we can see the close and the low price on the lower wick. The difference between the close and the open price, which is the body of that candle, should, usually should be red or black, whatever the color you, you are using on your uh, chart, where in the future, like next uh, webinar, we'll be talking about uh, how to use technical analysis on MT4. We can go into details how to change these colors and customize it. And my 
uh, my colleague Saif in the previous webinar also mentioned this point, but we can mention it again because it is important, customizing your own chart. All right, back to the candlesticks. When we have the closed price lower than the open price means the candle went down. If we are short selling, we made profit. But if we bought on the open price or the high price and it went down, we are losing. How we can know that the candle will go up or down? First, we should know about the pattern of the market, how the market moves. How can I can expect the movement of the market? That called the trend line. Before talking about the trend line, is there any question? You can ask me in the chat or the questions. All right, no questions, we can continue now. So for the trend lines, we have two types of the trend lines. For a starter, the trend line is the, the direction of the movement of the asset. So if the asset is moving up, it's uptrend. If the asset is moving down, it's downtrend. Does that mean that whenever I see anything moving up that's uptrend? That's not exactly the case. But when you are looking at any uptrend to start with, we can see low price goes up, reaching a high, high price. Any correction happened here, it's fine. And then prices went up again, recorded higher high. So this higher high followed, following this higher high, most likely will indicate an, uh, an uptrend, but we also have to look at the lows. When we're looking here, we have this low price here. It's higher low than this one. And then followed by this one, which is higher than this. So whenever we see any trend line that shows higher highs and higher lows, that means that trend line is going up. So we had, we had correction here, we call it correction, the, the down movement here, the slight one. Whenever we have this, we should keep in mind that this movement should not exceed this. So it went down here, but it should not go lower than this. Otherwise, that might mean a change in direction. So the prices here went up, and then we had slight correction here, this correction should not exceed this. So the prices should not go this way. That's not an uptrend, even if we have higher highs, but still we have lower lows. Clear so far about the uptrend? All right, so. The downtrend, the downtrend is totally the opposite one. When prices are going down, we start with a high price or any price, and then we start moving down. So prices went down, we have slight correction here, but this lower high can't go to this level because this level is for the high. So it should stay lower than this level. And it went down again, similar to the lower lows. So the prices should not go this one, this way. It should move into lower lows and lower highs. That means we have a downtrend. That means we have a, move, uh, a down movement in the market. That will lead us to the point that I started this topic with, which is the patterns and levels in the market. So, the patterns and levels. Wherever we are reading anything about the financial market, you hear words like head and shoulders, double bottom, double top. We can say like support, resistance, pivot point. What does that mean exactly? Here we'll be talking about it. So the patterns are like we have hundreds or thousands of patterns in the market. Some of them are proven statistically. 
and other ones that like personal patterns someone can see in the market like uh, someone who likes certain pattern in the market that might not statistically proven but you can't say that strong as long as they are making profit but there are some patterns that are proven statistically you will ask me how proven statistically because history repeats itself if you can recall we talked about the economic cycle in the fundamental analysis after that when we started technical analysis analysis we mentioned the dow theory which we say the market discounts everything so the market discounts the fundamental analysis or the result of the fundamental analysis or the fundamental news so that result when we reflect it in the market the market will reflect the economic cycle that's why we have patterns that how that's how we have patterns we memorize it we know it we study it we use it in the trading we make profit sometimes it makes profit sometimes we miss that depends on the news in the market we might have like sudden impact with any news so we can go into the patterns before that we should know about the support and resistance so the support and resistance are levels that are important in the market because we know at this level we might have uh, a rebound which is uh, the market was going down then we hit a level that caused the market to go back up this is called a rebound so or a, a bounce so the bounce or a rebound is usually caused on what we call support level so the prices are going down so we have something supported from below that support is called support level at that level we have high buying at that asset we have rigid prices so the prices at that level tend not to go lower it might break under some selling pressure but at some point and the general idea of it that point supports the asset i'll show you examples for that when we uh, explain it in details on the charts you will understand it better so the resistance is totally the opposite the resistance is something that stops or reduces the uptrend of any asset the prices are going up they hit certain price that price caused the market to go down again or caused that asset to go down again that called resistance level all right what is the pivot level the pivot level is the center level of a time frame let's say for example that level that the market is trading at or around at that point let's say for the gold we have 1700 1700 dollars per ounce today that price is the pivot price or the main point of the market if the market moved up we can say yes the market's moving up if the market's going down below that price we can say the market is moving down so that pivot uh, level will show us any movement over it or below it that will indicate or for will give us a slight idea about the future trend of that market or that asset Meanwhile, resistance zones arise to do selling at certain price. So when, when the prices are going up, we have selling price, right? So people started selling or traders started selling, so the price went down. It's totally the opposite for support levels. When it goes down, people start or traders start buying, so the buying will give us support to that asset. What about the pivot point? The pivot point where usually the tra trading on that asset is the lightest we have the lightest volume we have the smoothest movement of the price we don't have jumps at that point unless we have major event happen these three points are the major points that we will be talking about when we are talking about the patterns in the market we are starting with everyone's favorite the double bottom or double top pattern 
This one is easy to read, simple, statistically proven to be useful and to be true uh, to its title as the beloved of all traders. If we are looking at this pattern here, we can see that prices went down and hit a certain level. Prices went down here and hit a certain level. We caused first bottom. This is support level because prices hit here and went up again. So the prices when the prices went up, it started going sharp, 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 and then slowed, 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 reaching this point where start where it started going down again. This is called the neckline, which is a strong resistance usually on the charts, where it causes the market to change the direction, but not for long. When prices go down, it would it will start gathering momentum, momentum, and until it hits the second bottom, which should not exceed the level of the first bottom. Okay, so prices went down for the first bottom, went up for the neckline, which is this line. This is the resistance, went down. This bottom, the second one, should not exceed the first one. If it exceeded that level, means most probably the pattern will have a continuation and it will continue to go down. If it rebounded from here or bounced from this price, it will go up, reaching this neckline that we talked about. This resistance, this strong resistance that we should, it caused the market or the asset which we are talking about here we are talking about gold it caused the gold to change direction from uptrend to go back down but the momentum that we gathered when we are going down when we are going down here this momentum gave us power to jump from this going up hit this resistance if you can look at it this is a daily chart See how many days, one, two, three, four, five. It took six days for gold to break this resistance, strong one, and then it went up. Usually this rise will be between 60 to 66% of the drop. So if we look at this drop here, from here, from this level, until here and then we measure this one from here until here we will find this going around 60 to 66 percent of this pattern do you have any questions about uh, double bottom and double top it's important formation it's important pattern in the market I really want you to be comfortable about it and at least to know the double bottom and double top when you see it. So we talked about double, double bottom here, but the name is double bottom, double top. How that happens? If we looked at this in an inverse view like this, price is going up, hit high, going down, then hit high again and then going down Which will not be that long but that's it so we have the first high the second high we have the neckline here and then we have the break or breakthrough down here this is called double top and this is the double bottom Clear so far? Do you have any questions about it? Perfect. We are moving to the next one. The next pattern is called the flags. The flags are many patterns or small movements in the market that indicate a possibility of 
a certain action. Usually they are they move in short and fast uh, patterns. Let's look at it in this chart. So we have bullish flag and bearish flag. The bullish flag means the flag will do, go down so the market will go up. Bearish flag means the flag will go up to so the market will go down. We can look at this here. If you look at this, we have a quick movement, rapid movement, short candles, just following each other, short ones, short, 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 until we reach this level, this formation, which is like a flag, if we are looking this, this way. This is the flag, went down, so the market will be going up right after the flag. While bearish flag, here we have the flag is flying up like this. So short movements, short candles, small ones. You might have like long candles like this one, but usually it's short candles. The flag is going goes up, so the market will go down. That's the flag, bearish flag and bullish flag. Simple ones, easy to digest, easy, easy to see, and easy to understand. Usually flags are not really accurate, but at least they will give us a hint. We will be prepared for anything that happens. Usually when you see a, uh, the flag, you don't trade you you don't buy or sell until the flag is confirming the end so if i notice the flag here i will wait until the flag breaks this level yes broke this level went up i can buy here so the market will continue up while if i bought here for example and the flag just couldn't confirm and just went down, I will be losing. That's why for flags, we are always waiting until it confirms the breakout. Once broke out of the flag, the flag confirmed the trend, we can trade based on that. It's similar to the bearish one. If I bought, let's for example here, expecting it to go up, but it went down, then I will be losing. While I can short sell from here, after it breaks from this level, I can do a short selling and I can make generate profit here. For the flags, we should be careful. We should wait always for the, for the confirmation of the breakout. Clear about the flags? Do you have any questions? Yes, we will have a quick view on the chart on the platform and we will have a look on the chart itself. Yes, no worries. So moving to the next pattern. This pattern is one of the most famous or well-known patterns in the market. Head and shoulders. Head and shoulders usually so common, happens in the market a lot, and it's accurate. Once confirmed, it's accurate. Yes, Mr. Anir, I will, I will explain the confirmation in a bit. So head and shoulders, once confirmed, then it's accurate. So how it happens? As the name says, we should have two shoulders and a head for each pattern. But what, rely, what, what is below these uh, head and shoulders, it's the neckline, which is the neck. So when the market is moving down, for example, or moving horizontally here, and then suddenly we had uptrend. So it went, prices went up, reach certain level. We called it resistance level here. And then prices went down we formed a top. This is the first top. Then prices hit the support level here and rebounded up, bounced up. So, but exceeded the first top. 
See, when, when I mentioned the double top, I told you that it should not exceed the first top. If it exceeded it, we will have two options, either head and shoulders or a change of direction. So the prices went up here, hit this level this high, and rebound, and went down, declined. So here we had the first shoulder, we had the head, the first top, the second top. Now, if you're looking at this this way, without this part, without this part, we can say this is an uptrend. It's an uptrend, right? We have low, higher low, and higher low. We have high, higher high, higher high, right? But we have a change here that happened, caused the prices to go down. Once it started going down, hit this support and went back up. At this moment, this what we will wait for and we call confirmation of the head and shoulders. Once the prices broke, came back below, came back down and formed a top here, we can say this is a top head and shoulders. One shoulder, head, and the other shoulder. We will be waiting for this break. We saw the two shoulders and the head, and we saw the prices going to the support level, which we call the neckline. Once the prices broke below the neckline and closed at least one candle below, Look at it here. This candle, the close is higher than the neckline, but this one broke the neckline and the closed below it. Which is the bearish candle. So once we have this close, we can say the prices will go down. The prices will go down. We can do a short selling from here. So we can collect some profit here. Clear about the head and shoulders? Any questions about head and shoulders? All right, go back to Mr. Anil's question. Uh, how confirmation is done? So the confirmation is the point where we are sure that 90% or 70%, which is the highest probability, uh, that Pattern is true when we are looking at one by one. When we're looking at double top, the confirmation we were waiting for the double top was this break. Breaking the neckline. We saw the first bottom, second bottom, bottom, and we went up to the neckline. Once it broke the neckline and it closed above the neckline, this is called a confirmation. It confirmed the pattern. If it's going, if it's double top here, so this is the neckline. So the confirmation will be breaking the neckline down trend. Moving to the flags, the confirmation for the flags is the breakout. Once the prices broke out of the flag, whether up or down, this will be a confirmation. For bullish flag, the break up is the confirmation. While for the bearish flag, the breakdown or break below is the confirmation. And I explained the confirmation for head and shoulders. I hope I answered your question clearly. And if you have any questions, any of you, the attendees, do not hesitate to ask. So, yep, no worries. All right, now we talked about all this theory. We mentioned that for the time being, let's go to have a look on where you can find the fundamental news so you can do your fundamental analysis and how to look on the chart on our MT4 platform to see the details about the, the charts or patterns. One by one, let's go start with our Star Trader website. 
So in Star Trader website, we provide you with all the tools that you need to know about the market, about the news. We have two things. One, which is called the economic calendar. This calendar here shows you the news for each country, for each day and the time. For example, we will be looking for today, here, October 4th. We have these news happening in the world that will affect the financial market in a way or another. That depends on the currency or the asset you are trading with Star Trader. Since we have more than 170 products, so we should cover a huge portion of the news from around the world. So we have the news here. But the good thing is not that we have just the news. You can look at the impact of each one of these news. If you are looking at time, it will be the time here. You will set it like mine is GMT minus four. You will be looking at the news here for the time. The flag, which is the currency that is affected directly here and in which region. So we have this news about Spain. And here we have this is the time. We have this, Spain, in Europe, the impact is low. We have just one point here. While if you are looking at this news, for example, the time, it's Europe, since we have the European flag. This is Europe, the impact is medium. We have two points. For the time being, for today, we don't have major news that will affect the market in strong effect but if we are looking for later on on the US uh, timing we will have the jobs opening report in the US this is the timing the US and this is the impact if you can look we have three points here means we have high impact additionally we have further information for you we have the name of the news we have the actual for the previous news that were released today but for the ones that have not been released yet it's not there and we have the forecast so what we expect and what what the experts expect these numbers will be and the previous reading for example if you are looking at this one for the production produce uh, production procurement index or purchasing index uh, the actual was 34%, uh, 43%, while the forecast was 43.1. So we have slight difference, 43.3% to 43.1% as forecast. But when we compare it to the previous one, which is, was 38.0%, it's bigger number. So the main rule is, as long as the actual news are better than the previous ones, that's positive in the market while we can say additionally if the actual news are better than the forecast news is also way better we looked at the news here we knew how to read the news, how to find the news and you can click on it here it will give you details the overview of the news the chart of it the history of this report and the effect of it. So we knew where to find the news, but I'm still new in the market. I can't really analyze the news. That would be some answer from one of the attendees with us here. So what should you do? You can go to the same tab, Tools to Newsroom. In Newsroom, you will find way more reports more details about the market we have our market analysts here market researchers we write news everything on this tab you can go for today's uh, report for example 4th of october we have the major news us dollar index the major fundamental news here what happened in the market what happened in the economy for the us and the technical analysis for the US dollar index, which is which reflects the US dollar. Moving next, we have the euro. Also, we have fundamental news and technical. 
similar to that one we can call it so for example for for crude oil we have this about crude oil how much is the production what we expect to happen in the production levels or supply levels demand levels for the crude oil and then we have these points pivot point that we measure if you can see here it's a major point in the market we have the support levels and resistance levels so this basically how star trader can help you to read the market to analyze the market we are not just giving you the training here we also giving you the tools to apply your training so we saw this let's look at the platform here star trader platform also we have the mt4 here this is the chart basically you can draw the chart the way you want we will be talking about that in further in further webinars in the future but for quick review here here we have the patterns in the market we have the chart we have candlesticks the the chart pattern that everyone knows about and everyone loves because it gives you too much information you can just with you can draw this pattern line here the trend line as Saif explained in the previous webinar, we have lower lows here, if you can see. And for the other one here, we can draw this one. We have lower highs. That means we have a downtrend. The downtrend confirmed. This is the US dollar on the, uh, US, sorry, this is the US crude oil, which is WTI on the daily chart. This is on the uh, platform. Here we have, for example, we can go to euro, we can go, all right, if we go to the euro here, we can, we can find some patterns if we go into details or deep analysis for this. But for example, uh, the trend is going down. We have a confirmation for the trend. We have confirmation for Fibonacci retracement, which, which also was explained in details with uh, my colleague in a previous webinar last uh, Wednesday. That's how you can use these tools in the analysis. The trend line that shows you the trend of the market. You can look at these lower lows, lower highs, and you can try to find whatever pattern you like to find. Like we have here, if you can see, we have here double bottom. This is one, this is two, and this is a neckline, and it prices went up. So this is live example on the double bottom. If you look at it here, you will find more details into the chart, more patterns we have here. Like for example, this is my, we call it micro double top. It's not really a double top, but looks like it. So this is our Star Trader platform where we show you everything you need we provide you with all the products that you need to trade on and i showed you where to find the news where to find our reports if you have any questions do not hesitate to ask me i will give you one minute to write any question you think about which i can answer regarding this webinar All right, everyone, I'm very happy that it was very clear and I hope it's easy topic. If you have any questions, do not hesitate. Do not hesitate to contact Star Trader on customer support on the chat for on our website or contact your account manager and ask any question you think about about the market. We are more than happy to give you any information you need that will help you to improve your trading experience with us. We will have more webinars in the future. We'll have the advanced webinars each Thursday, the beginners webinars on each Tuesday, and we'll see you in the next webinar. Trade safe and trade with confidence.